Well, welcome everybody. I'm glad that you've decided to join us. I'm Pastor Scott Herkert at New Life Community Wesleyan Church in Grand Rapids, Ohio. And if you're new with us, I'd like to welcome you. And of course, this week, I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas. I'm glad that uh, I'm able to, to wish you that today. Um, as far as announcements this week, we will be having a prayer meeting uh, via Zoom on Wednesday night, and that will take place at 7 o'clock. I have a special prayer meeting group that I uh, started on uh, Facebook, and uh, that's where I send the invitations out for that. So that is all that we have as far as announcements. I have not been able to get around to do a Christmas Eve service, so we are probably not going to do that this year. Uh, sorry that we're not able to, to do that this way, but... Uh, that uh, is the way that things have been dictated this year, uh, so we will pass on that. So our call to worship, our scripture is from Psalm chapter 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among the peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give to the Lord, O families of the people. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. He shall judge the peoples righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad. Let the sea roar in all its fullness. Let the field be joyful in all that is in it. And then all the trees of the woods will rejoice before the Lord, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to worship you today. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence with us. We would invite you, Lord, to lead us and guide us as we spend time in worship today. We invite you, Lord, to speak to us through the singing of the songs, through the prayers that are prayed, and through the... Uh, the pro proclamation of your word. We dedicate this time to you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Josh and Wade will now lead us in our time of singing. Hark the herald angels sing. Uh, wrong song. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> Must have been a great day when them angels came and talked to people about God's will. Um, I probably would have fainted dead away, but...
going to go right into Angels We Have Heard on High.
Josh for doing the music for us. I appreciate your help in that way. Um, as far as prayer requests, uh, just some that were been passed to my, along to me or ones that I thought of are uh, Matt and Marissa. Marissa is uh, expecting a baby any day now, so we can be praying for a safe delivery and a healthy baby in that situation. My son-in-law Lucas contacted me uh, yesterday. His grandmother just got home from the hospital and uh, seems to be having some side effects there, uh, a little confusion, and uh, so we pray for her. Dr. Shelley, uh, my boss at the bookstore, has been diagnosed. Well, she hasn't been diagnosed yet, but uh, we think maybe she has COVID, so we want to be praying for her healing and also uh, Bridget Light was diagnosed with COVID. So let's spend some time praying this morning. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your presence with us. And Lord, as we uh, celebrate this Christmas season, it is just wonderful uh, that we can focus on um, new life, that we can focus on you. And uh, Lord, thank you for your mercy and for your goodness and all of the things that we're reminded of. Lord, what a, a wonderful time of the year, and uh, even though this has been a uh, confusing year for us, I just pray, thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your mercy. We give you praise today because we recognize what an amazing, powerful God you are, and we praise you for all of the, the ways in which you provide for us, your love for us, your protection in our lives, for the answers to prayer, and for your strength and goodness in all that we do and say. Thank you for, for taking such good care of us, Lord. As we come to you this morning, we would pray for this church, and we ask that you would continue to bless this church. We pray, Lord, that through our ministry, that many would come to know you as Lord and Savior, and people would grow in their relationship with you. I pray, Lord, that you would bless us. I pray, Lord, that you would, uh, uh, that our efforts would be uh, rewarded, and uh, we pray, Lord, that you, above all, that you would be glorified through the things that we do and say. We want to pray also, Lord, for our nation today, and we pray for our leaders. We ask, Lord, that you would guide them, continue to, to help them to uh, find an end to the uh, COVID virus, and uh, we pray, Lord, that you would guide them, and as uh, we go through this transition of government, uh, we pray, Lord, that you would be with both parties, and we pray, Lord, for your guidance and all that happens over the next month as this transition takes place. We want to pray also, Lord, for the people around us that protect us. We think of our first responders, and we ask, Lord, that you would bless them in the work that they do, and especially for protection. Many of them put them in harm's Many of these people put themselves in harm's way, and we pray, Lord, that you would protect them. Give them physical protection, and uh, Lord, with COVID, we recognize even more the, the emotional and the spiritual trauma that they experience through these. And I pray, Lord, that you would uh, help them uh, to focus on your peace and the goodness that you have. We pray, Lord, for your help in that area. We want to pray also, Lord, for uh, the people around us that protect us, our first responders, uh, our military personnel, the hospital workers. We pray that you would be with all of them. And we pray also for the request today, Lord. We pray for Marissa and for the baby that she's carrying and I would ask Lord that uh, you would just grant a, a safe delivery of this baby and we pray Lord that you would keep Marissa and, and the baby healthy. We think also Lord of Matt and uh, all of our health care workers that we have connections with in our congregation, uh, Charlene and Bridget and also uh, Brenda and we pray that you would protect each one of them uh, as they place, put themselves in harm's way many times. We just pray, Lord, that you would grant them physical protection, but also, Lord, guard their minds and uh, guard their hearts. We want to pray also for Bridget today. We pray for healing for her from COVID. We ask, Lord, for a speedy recovery, and Lord, that there would not be any uh, serious side, terms, uh, side, side effects from this. We want to pray also, Lord, for Lucas, Lucas's grandmother, and we pray, Lord, for your healing there. Just help her to recover from this quickly, and we pray that uh, what she's struggling with would not be anything serious. We would also pray, Lord, for uh, Dr. Shelley, and we pray for healing for her. 
Thank you again for your presence here with us today, Lord. As we study your word, we pray that you would illuminate your word to us, that we might grow in our relationship with you. And uh, Lord, we invite you to guide us, to sharpen us, and to direct us as we spend time in your word. We dedicate this time to you once again in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture passage today is in Luke chapter 1. We're going to read verses 46 through 55. If you want to open your Bibles up to that passage of scripture. This is a passage that uh, is referred to as the Magnificat. And I believe that that has... Uh, origins with the Latin language and uh, but this is at a meeting between Mary and Elizabeth you may remember Mary is expecting Jesus um, she's just discovered that Elizabeth is a few months along in her pregnancy and she's expecting to give birth to John the Baptist um, you know a lot of times as we look at passages like this uh, we think of pretty scenes when it comes to, comes with the nativity I mean you see Mary, you see Joseph, you see the happy little baby in the manger, and everything is so nice and peaceful and pleasant. And I think a lot of times we forget uh, all of the things that are going on along with that. Um, there, could, there were some very scary moments that went along with this. And I think, especially in our society, we might miss how, how um, scary and dangerous this would have been of a time for Mary, um, for her to be found to be pregnant before being married was just, it was unheard of, and it was definitely not acceptable. Um, her family was likely very upset with her, maybe questioning what had really happened in that situation. Joseph may have been looking at the whole situation, wondering what on earth happened to this woman that, that I have committed myself to, and uh, why is this happening in my situation? And he had some major decisions that he had to make. Was he going to file charges against Mary? Or was he going to just allow um, things to go on? Whatever it was, um, he had some big decisions and, and it was a, certainly some difficult decisions. And also you have the whole village. Um, she was likely going to be ostracized by the village, almost shunned. And um, so it was, it was a very scary time for uh, Mary at this particular time in history. And while we look at this as a very difficult time, in the passage that we're looking at this morning, Mary also, uh, she focuses on God. And I think that she's able to endure these difficulties because she is so focused on God at this particular time. Uh, as we read through this passage in just a moment, I want you to think about how much Mary talks about God in this passage. And so as we read together, think about that. But then uh, as we get to the message, I'm going to share with you four actions that Mary took that maybe made it easier for her to endure all of these difficulties. And uh, also as we uh, face a very, the ending of a very difficult year, what are some things we can do uh, to, to deal with the uh, difficulties that we're faced with? So in Luke chapter 1, begin with, beginning with verse 46, this is where Mary meets Elizabeth after it's discovered that both of them are expecting. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowliest state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. <coughs> he has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today. So there was a lot of, of mention of God in these verses that we just read. And I want to give you four actions that Mary takes in here. The first action is that Mary praises God. She praises God. And so as we already know, Mary's pregnant and she's faced uh, 
with a, a challenging time in her life. There's a lot of pressure that's on her. And uh, so uh, if you're familiar with the, the movie, The Nativity, I think it does a really good job of, of demonstrating um, the stigma that may have been attached with Mary discovering that she's pregnant at this time. Uh, they, they portray it that she goes to goes away to spend time with Elizabeth and Zachariah and, and uh, when she comes back then it's discovered that she's pregnant and, and uh, so is she 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 it's discovered all of these things are discovered there are several things that Mary faces one thing is that it's illegal for her to be pregnant at this particular time as far as the religious rules are concerned concern and so uh, for her to come at this particular time and be pregnant uh, she could have faced stoning all of the people of the town would have come together they would have grabbed rocks and they would have continued to throw rocks at her until she died so I mean this would have been just a really ugly type of death she faces ridicule uh, because this was not an acceptable thing for her to happen she faces excommunication I mean you, you see in the movie uh, people that she had previously had a really good relationship with really don't want to have anything to do with her. And her family questions or her Joseph questions or trying to figure out what's happened in this situation. And when she tells them that she's expecting the Messiah, that an angel had told her that she would be uh, the mother of the Messiah, uh, they just kind of shake their head. And they're disgusted with her because they think that she's covering something up. Well, Elizabeth is expecting a child at the same time, and it's a miracle for Elizabeth because she's too old to have children. But God had opened her womb and allowed uh, this pregnancy to happen, and so Elizabeth and Zachariah are going to become the parents of John the Baptist. And so this is an exciting uh, time for both of them. And as they come together, this is the, the Magnificat. It's the song that Mary sings or what she recites as she comes into Elizabeth's presence. And Elizabeth recognizes right away, if we just look back a few verses, she recognizes that Mary is uh, carrying the Messiah in her womb. And so as we look at this passage, these first couple of verses, uh, Mary says, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. Mary is just really focusing on the greatness of God and she's praising God through what she has has to deal with. And uh, you know, when, when situations are, are difficult and things aren't going the way that we had planned, it can be hard to praise God. It can be hard to think of things uh, to praise God for, but a Mary, Mary does it. And whether it's just naturally bubbling up out of her or she's forcing herself to, I'm not sure what it is, but Mary is praising God and uh, talking about the wonderful things that God has done. <coughs> she would have reason at this time in her life for bitterness. She might have reason for anger at this particular time for all of the things that she's, she's faced with. But Mary looks at it and she's able to say the words of verse 48. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. Mary is looking at this very difficult situation and she's focusing on what a great God she has and what a blessing it is for her to be carrying this child within her, her womb. She has the Messiah that she's carrying with her. And as we've all learned, if there's one thing that we've learned this year is that plans change. Plans change. Uh, we sat down at the end of last year as a board or it might have been the beginning of this year and uh, we took out calendars and we wrote down all of the things that were going to happen this year. And I looked at that about a month ago and uh, boy, we could have just thrown that calendar in the trash. I don't think much of anything that we had planned out was able to happen this year because of all of the changes. And you know, when things don't work out the way that we want them to, it can be discouraging. There can be bitterness that's connected with it. There can be anger that's connected with those things. And uh, rather than allowing those things to happen, let's praise God. Let's praise God, not in a fake way. Sometimes it might be in a forced way. We need to force ourselves to see where God has done good things for us. But uh, 
We need to focus on praising God rather than focusing on our circumstances. A lot of times we can't change our circumstances, but we can change how we respond to those circumstances. And so we need to, to make sure that we're focusing on God. So the first action that Mary took was that she praised God. The second action that she takes is that she rehearses the at attributes of God. She rehearses the attributes of God. Mary's in a bad position. She's got all of these things that are, that are lined up against her. Uh, she's got her, her family that's probably wondering what really happened. And in that movie, The Nativity, her father even says, is this something that one of the, the Roman soldiers did to you? I mean, how do you explain this thing? And like I said before, when, when she describes it, that there was an angel that visited her and told her that she was carrying the Messiah, they kind of scoffed at that. They figured that Mary was covering something up. Uh, you've got the village that's shunning her. There's, there's a threat of stoning. In one of the scenes of the movie, uh, Joseph is dreaming that uh, the, the town is gathering around Mary and that they're preparing to stone her. And that's when the angel comes and gives the, uh, the announcement to Joseph. It's a, uh, it's a bad position, uh, position for her to be in. But uh, what has happened to Mary comes from the mighty God. So we look at the, the next few verses. Uh, Mary is in, in, in uh, she recognizes what a mighty God she has. In verse 49, for he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name and his mercy is on uh, those who fear him from generation to generation. Mary is able to look beyond the circumstances that she's faced with and she's able to to focus on God and, and focus on the attributes of God and what a great God he is. And you know, a lot of times uh, we, we tend to, to bring God down to our level and we, we fail to see what a great God our God really is. But in this particular situation, Mary doesn't bring God down. But she, she looks up and she focuses on what a great God that she has. God is, is ultimate purity, and uh, he is a mighty God. And that same might is, is available to us today. We, we look at the, the, the mightiness of God that we see in the creation of the world or in the, uh, in the Israelites crossing the Red Sea or in Mary becoming pregnant with the Messiah. I mean, these are all amazing, mighty things, and maybe we, we somehow separate ourselves from that, from that. But, that is the same God that we are here worshiping today. And we can be so thankful that we, this is the same God. Our circumstances maybe are, are pretty crummy at this time. We don't probably don't want to go back and relive 2020. But we have a mighty God that we can look to uh, when, these, when these things are going wrong in our life. We can't change our circumstances, but we can focus on a God who's mightier than our circumstances. So the first action that Mary took was that she praised God. The second action, she rehearses the attributes of God. The third action is that she confesses the sovereignty of God. She confesses the sovereignty of God. And this is in verses 51 through 53. When we talk about the sovereignty of God, I'm, I'm really talking about the power of God. Um, and, you know, as I look at this passage, I'm wondering if Mary just wasn't rehearsing a monumental event that had happened in history. Something that she would have been very familiar with would have been the Passover and the things that were that surrounded the Passover. Uh, as we go through these verses, she says he has shown strength with his arm. You know, uh, back at the time of the Passover, the Israelites were slaves in Egypt, and yet God was able to cause a series of plagues to come upon Egypt so that the, uh, the Israelites were delivered from their life of slavery, and then when they're pinned between the Egyptian army and the Red Sea, God opens up the Red Sea and allows them to cross on dry ground. Something that's only able to be done by a mighty and sovereign God. As we go on to the next part of that, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. As we look at the proud in, in that particular situation, Pharaoh wasn't just the king of Egypt, but he was a part of the pantheon of gods <coughs> that the Egyptians had. And so um, he may have thought that he was really something special, but, 
but he's really brought low. He basically sees his, his nation desperate as they follow the Israelites into the Red Sea, and God causes the sea to close back up on them and destroy them. Uh, he puts down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. I mean, the Israelites were slaves. How lowly do you have to get that uh, he's able to bring them through this? And he's filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. God does so, ama so many amazing things with the Israelites, and maybe that's what, what Mary was focused on. Maybe she was focused on something else, but she recognizes the, the sovereignty of God. And you know, even when we are able to see the sovereignty of God, a lot of times we can go on from that and we can miss it pretty quickly. The Israelites, after they had gone through that, within a period of two years, they're complaining to God because uh, they feel like they're starving in the desert and God's not taking care of them. And, and all of these bad things are happening to them and they're wishing that they were back in Egypt where they could eat meat and they could have all of the things that they wanted in order to be able to survive. They quickly doubted the, the sovereignty of God. But at this time, Mary chooses to focus on the sovereignty of God. She chooses to focus on what God is able to do rather than focusing on her, her situation or the circumstances or the world that she's, she's faced to live with. She focuses on the sovereignty of God, and that's something else that we can do as we face difficult circumstances in our life. So the first action, she praises God. The second action, she rehearses the attributes of God. Third, she confesses the sovereignty of God. And then fourth, she recalls God's mercy. That's the last two verses that we're going to look at today. Um, the last two weeks I've talked about or referred to the 400 years of silence that would have taken place before this. For 400 years prior to the time of Mary and Joseph, um, Israel had not heard from God in, in the way that they had in, in times past. And so at this time, Mary hears from God that God is placing the Messiah within her womb and that he's going to deliver, uh, deliver the people. I mean, this brings hope. It brings mercy to Mary. It brings hope and mercy to the nation. And so I just imagine as Mary was going through these times that she remembered the prophecies of the Old Testament and she's recognizing as she's going through this how God had, had allowed her to have a first-hand experience with these prophecies. She recognizes that God has placed within her womb the Messiah. And so she recalls the mercy of God. He's helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. 400 years of silence in Mary's recognizing. Now God is bringing about his Messiah. God is bringing about all of those things that had been talked about in the Old Testament from the first chapters of Genesis through the last, uh, last verses of Malachi. God had talked about uh, bringing this Messiah into the world and Mary is the one who's going to deliver him into the world and she recognizes God's mercy and what a great event this is going to be for the nation of Israel. Um, and so these are the things that she's talking about in verse 55 as he spoke to our fathers to Abraham and to his seed forever these are promises that are coming to fulfillment at this time she immerses herself in God's mercy during this bad season in her life and you know we cannot determine what, what the season of our life is going to bring we can always immerse ourselves in God's mercy and focus on the mercy that God has for us. You know, this has been a tough year, and it's been a hard year maybe for us to focus on God. We go back to, to last Christmas, none of us had any idea of, probably hadn't even thought of the coronavirus or COVID or any of the things that we're familiar with this year. But uh, even despite the circumstances that we have come through this year, we can continue to focus on God. And we can take Mary's actions to heart. We can praise God. No matter what our circumstances are, we can continue to praise God. We can rehearse the attributes of God. Know who God is. Look at the things that God has provided for us. We can confess the sovereignty of God. I mean, look at the power that God has and that he demonstrates throughout scripture and recognizing that that power is still happening today. We may not see it in the same way that, 
they saw it in creation or that Mary saw it or other times in history it's been shown, but that power is still there today. And then we can recall God's mercy. And that's what Christmas is so much about, is focusing on the mercy that God has for us and has for, for this world that he's willing to allow uh, Jesus to come into the world to provide salvation for us and the forgiveness of sin. As we put these actions into practice in our own lives, uh, we can survive the difficulties and the challenges, and we can live a life like Mary lived. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this song, the Magnificat, that Mary uh, shared as she came into the presence of Elizabeth. And I thank you for the moment that they shared, and we're able to take a glimpse into that. And Lord, how that helps us to really focus on you and all of the goodness and all of the mercy that you have. What a great and merciful God you are. And we just praise you today for all that you've done for us, for the ways in which you provide for us. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy and for your goodness. And I pray, Lord, that whatever our circumstances are, that you would help us to, to stop focusing on ourselves and to focus on you instead. I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let me just remind you again, I know this probably gets old, but remind you again that uh, you can uh, continue to provide your tithes and offerings online. You can mail checks. Um, I think there are direct deposit options if you want to talk to Brenda about that. But, uh, we are so thankful uh, for your continuing to remember your church and to provide for your church. So thank you for that. And that's just your little reminder for today. And uh, once again, let me wish you a Merry Christmas. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in this way again next week. God bless.